My wife's one-night stand ended up as a crazy affair and lasted two years before I served her divorce papers. I met my ex-wife in the ninth grade of high school. Everything seemed great through high school. However, the first sign was during her freshman year of college. She started to become distant and eventually wanted to take a break. She was honest about her intentions. She wanted to see what else was out there. I wish I did let her explore her options, and if we ended up back together then it was meant to be. On the other hand, I had just proposed several months earlier and she accepted. So I felt fully committed at that point. We ultimately decided to stay together and ended up getting married. At the time she was in school for nursing and I was working in the oil field. I didn't feel like I had much going in my life so I decided to join the Air Force Reserve. In boot camp and tech school I met a female I call V. We became good friends and kept the relationship 100% platonic. After tech school we lost contact and things seems to be going pretty well in my marriage. We had two boys and both had great careers. One day while at work I get a call from my ex crying and saying she wants a divorce. She saw a message on Facebook that I hadn't seen yet from V saying she missed me, missed our conversations and hanging out. The message was pretty vague so my ex-wife assumed there was more than a platonic friendship. I got home that night and called V and spoke to her on speaker with my ex-wife next to me. She assured my ex-wife that we were just platonic friends and nothing had ever happened between V and I. At the time my ex seemed okay and things went back to normal. And although nothing ever came close to happening between V and I, this relationship clearly bothered my ex. So we told each other no friends of the opposite see that weren't mutual friends. Over the next several months the same distant person she was during her freshman year of college came back. She changed from the day shift to the night shift at work. She would go on girls' nights out and was constantly attached to her phone. I questioned her several times but she assured me she would never cheat. The girls' nights out eventually became a three to four times a week thing. I started to become very jealous and something in my heart told me she was seeing someone outside of our marriage. I decided to look through her Facebook page and messages. I found messages between her and another guy. Although there was no clear proof of cheating, the messages were more of the flirtatious nature. After reading the messages I went down a rabbit hole on FB. I looked at every picture and commented. Although there were lots of flirting and compliments, there was still no clear proof of cheating. We had a conversation about this and she once again assured me she was not cheating and stated he was strictly a platonic friend. After reminding her of our agreement to not have friends of the opposite sex, she promised to cut all ties with him. One Christmas morning, I was grabbing something from the counter and the home phone rang. My jaw dropped when I saw her platonic friend's name on the caller ID. I picked up the phone and he immediately hung up. I go into the room and demand the truth. She admits to meeting up with him a couple of times at the bar. But still claims they never hooked up. After a rocky few months we decided to work things out. We made the decision to move to North Texas as she began applying to CRNA schools in the area. She was accepted into a program at TCU and asked me if she could take a girls cruise with her best friends the summer before her program started. I said no several times but eventually gave in after her begging and pleading. Three weeks before her program starts, the school invited the family to a dinner. During this dinner the dean of the program states that my wife will need my support 100%. She will have to focus and study like she never has before. The dean said most marriages don't make it through the program. I told my wife she has my support. I will take care of the family while she pursues her dream while she did become extremely distant and spent lots of time at her school library and at a female friend's apartment for study time, I genuinely thought this time was being spent to focus on her studies. She would have to stay home to study for a test every weekend I had drill with the Air Force in Oklahoma. After a year and a half she was placed in Lafayette, Louisiana for her clinical rotation. I had started a job a year prior and saw potential to move up in my career, so we decided it was best for the boys and I to stay in Texas. 
We would try to visit as often as possible, but her schedule would allow for one, maybe two weekends a month. There were two times I went down to see her without the boys. The first time was during an LSU slash Alabama tailgating party. Although we did have fun, the lack of attention she paid to me seemed purposeful. Like she intentionally treated me like a guy she put in the friend zone and had zero romantic interest in. The second time I went to see her, we did hang out with just the two of us. However, by 8 p.m. she was so drunk she passed out. Moving forward about two months later, I got a call from her around 9 p.m. She is accusing me of cheating and claims I've never loved her. I brought up the way she treated me during the two rare visits I had with her. She starts crying and asks me if I would ever leave her. Even though she was the valedictorian in high school out of a class of 650 and graduated at the top of her nursing school program, I once again assumed she was stressed from school and assured her I was loyal to her and will continue to hold the house down until she comes back. She said I have to tell you something, but you have to promise you won't leave me. At this point I was 99.99% .99 sure she was cheating. I assumed it was some guy she met in Louisiana. She then states, I've been cheating on you, for two years. She had met a guy the first night of her girl's cruise and slept with him that night. She didn't plan to speak to him after the cruise ended, but said he kept texting and calling and eventually she gave in. She was going down to see him every weekend I had drill with the Air Force. When she would go to study with her female friend at her apartment, she was actually meeting up with him. My jaw dropped to the ground. She admitted that school is tough, but the distance, her cold demeanor, the lack of attention to me and our children was purely based on her affair. After this I looked at her like she was just another female in this world. I became jealous of everything she did and eventually decided to end it. Once the divorce was final, for the first time in my life I was single. I dated around for months at a time but could never trust any of them to commit. I felt like I had to protect myself and felt all women were the same. Fast forward two years later and I matched with my current wife on Tinder and we hit it off. There was something different about her and I felt like I've known her for years. We eventually decide to move in together and get married. Conversations about past relationships revolved around my ex and her ex. How she was treated by him, how my ex cheated on me. I never asked about promiscuity but did tell her I don't agree with friends of the opposite sex. At the time I rarely used social media but after a couple of years I reactivated my FB account. The other day I decided to go snooping through my current wife's FB page, and like they say, if you go looking you might find what you're looking for. There are several pictures of my wife on FB that are very revealing. Of course there are guys complimenting her and some commenting what they would do to her. There is one guy specifically that she was really close with who was constantly making sexual jokes with her. She hates going to movie theaters. However, there are several posts where she has checked into a theater with him. There's a comment on one post where she tells him if he acts up he will sleep on the couch. She claims they never lived together and have never even came close to sleeping with him. One time we had an ant infestation and she had him come over and spray for bugs, he does this for a living apparently. I did get upset at that time and told her to never invite one of her male friends into my home for any reason. Especially when I am not there. I told her I want all promiscuous pictures on her social media taken down, and I want all communication with any male friends she's had a history with cut off. We have a one-year-old daughter, and I don't want her to think that seeking validation is okay, and I don't want anyone else seeing my wife like that. Is this crossing the line? Any advice would help. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. You are justified. It's a very bad sign that she has these relationships with other men. No faithful and loving wife would conduct herself this way. Brother you need to start preparing for the rest of the story. Make sure you will be good when crap goes down. With the crap she is doing on the phone and social media too. OP, reply. Sorry for the confusion. The things with the theater and couch happened before our marriage. The point is she claims to have never lived with, dated or slept with this man. But there are signs that show otherwise. 
Obviously we all have a past. But I would never bring a female into our home that I've slept with and then keep it from my wife. The only reason the situation with this guy bothered me is because he has been to my house while I was not home. After seeing a history of sexual jokes, flirting, yes some while we were married, and comments about him sleeping on the couch, I don't think it's wrong or controlling to ask my wife if she has slept with him. Comment 2. What happened after your talk? Did your wife remove her promiscuous pictures from her social media? I agree that the past is past, but at least she should have removed those incidents with other guys from her social media when you started being together to avoid future conflicts. She had a past with this guy, but still shows in her FB history, so some people can find it by checking on her profile. OP reply, we had a chat about it last night. She was completely understanding and removed the pics and deleted him. We set some boundaries for our relationship on both ends. Wife stated she wants open marriage to screw random dudes though she has four kids. I'm a soon-to-be 43-year-old male married to a 36-year-old female. We've been married for seven years. MT oldest three children are 16, 14, and 11, and though they are not mine biologically they have little contact with their biological dad, visit him for a month once a year, and really don't interact with him otherwise the rest of the year, so I've been their father for the past seven years. I also have two biological children, six and three. So, this all started only a matter of weeks ago when my wife, after the children went to bed, told me that she wanted to open the marriage. Based on internet images that she saw I looked at that looked very different from her type, and the fact that we rarely had sex, once or twice every three months or so, she had come to the conclusion that maybe I would be okay with that, because then I could seek out someone who I sexually desired, and she could seek out someone who made her feel desired. She claimed it wasn't an emotional thing, just meeting up with someone she trusted every so often. Someone who wouldn't live near enough for it to be a regular thing to interfere with our day-to-day -day dynamic of family. This was all a huge shock to me, because I have always wanted her, and though we had sex rarely, I have always felt a sexual connection with her that I had never had with anyone before. I actually would have loved to get it more, but always felt her out up a wall. On top of that, though the marriage would be open for me too, I knew that even with permission, I'm not the kind of person who can do casual hookups, and so any woman I would likely feel comfortable with would unlikely be comfortable being with a married man. Even beyond that, I knew any time I spent pursuing someone, getting to know them, then actually dating and hooking up would be fine taken away from my family time, I'm also the sole breadwinner besides the child support for the older kids, so I am working more than 40 hours a week, and family doesn't just include the kids it also includes my wife who I have a deep connection with in almost every way. So I would end up feeling guilty about any energy put into that, so it is something I would never do. So this would end up being a one-sided open marriage. I had a feeling, so I asked, after silently taking all this in with tears, if there was someone specific she had in mind already. She said no, but likely someone she had met when she and her first husband opened their marriage. They lived hours away, so it wouldn't be someone near us. Anyway, the next day she came clean and said that she had been talking to someone from that time for the previous five months. He is polyamorous and was in a one-sided open relationship with his girlfriend who didn't want it but acquiesced. I have known my wife, and taking for five months. I remembered or sexually charged online messages texts and phone calls. I assumed it was well beyond any longer I was comfortable with, and when I spoke of it this way she never contradicted. So, this is obviously two separate issues. Connected, but separate, and I was overwhelmed. I could only deal with one thing at a time, and my wife is my best friend, the love of my life, and sharing her with someone else is beyond anything I could handle, and it wasn't a nebulous thing, she had someone already. My first priority was letting her know that I couldn't have an open relationship. She then explained that she was struggling with whether she was polyamorous, and that it may be something she needed. Over days of processing and trying to keep in mind her needs as well as my own I came to the conclusion that I need exclusivity, and if she needed this other relationship that I couldn't remain, and we would have to find a way to separate in a way that we could still raise the children amicably. She never considered separation because she loves me, and we are super close in so much of ourselves, and she worried about the family dynamic and what would happen. Now I know I hadn't dealt with the infidelity at this point, 
but understand that I was overwhelmed and scared of losing the love of my life and my best friend and closest confidant, and possibly breaking up my family where I would have little to no contact with my three oldest. I was desperate and was ready to give her one freebie, so that she could explore if that was really polyamory. I explained that it would be agony for me any time she stepped out with someone else, and I would lose confidence in us. She never thought she'd lose me, so she sinuses over it all, and in the meantime we yo-yoed with depression and emotionally charged Zex. Lots of it. More than we had had since we first dated. I tried super hard to keep her. Showing her affection, emotionally begging her not to hurt me. And she deliberate the situation, and it was agony. I knew that if I had to give up one of my desires for her out was no contest, she would easily win out, and the fact that I want an easy choice for her stung. This is finally when I realized that I had not dealt with the infidelity that already occurred and I finally realized that all my efforts were pathetic and that in that situation I had no power. I finally brought to the attention that yes, I wanted to be with her, but she had cheated on me. Polly or not if she wanted to keep me the effort had to be hers. She needed to repair what she broke, and once we discussed that things changed and she made efforts to keep me. She eventually came to the conclusion that what could be wasn't worth risking what she actually had, so she chose me, and it again was great. With emotionally charged Zex and all. Good days with moments of insecurity, but not the underlying dread that I had been living through while she deliberated the gate of my entire world. Now the period of Zex is over, and there is always something in the way of being intimate again, and yet I'm now yearning for it more than ever. And she's feeling pressured, and so closing down more and I'm tonight finally realizing that what the real problem is not that I'm not getting Zex, though I desperately want it, but that I've been so lonely since the day she told me that she wanted to open the relationship, when I lost the idea that though we had our issues that we were in it together. And I'm realizing that I'm still far more committed to this than she is, and I am asking myself if the roles were reversed what I would be doing to keep our relationship, and I know I would be sacrificing everything, every part of me, if I had to, and that is not what I'm getting from her and I'm laying awake now at midnight after only getting three hours of sleep the night before. I'm feeling so alone in this, and I am getting angry at her for not stepping up. And at the same time I'm so scared of losing her. This is so damn hard. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. You do know that eventually your wife is going to explore her polyamorous side anyway. She already has a partner in mind that she has explored this kind of relationship with before, so it's only a matter of time before she tests the waters again. Do you know the reasons why her first marriage failed? OP reply Oh, I didn't see the part about why her previous marriage failed. Yes, I know. They were young and she was hyper religious. He was a Marine and her ex Marine, religious dad and stepmom encouraged the whole thing. Through her marriage, she reconverted and some of the ideas of duty went with that. He was deployed and rarely home, and we think he is on the spectrum and really emotionally available. That's why they opened the marriage then. She and I are both atheists. Comment 2. Thanks for the reply. Would your wife be okay with you guys legally separating? Technically she wouldn't be cheating, but she would open herself up to the possibility of her losing you because you may find a relationship with someone who is more compatible as far as monogamy goes. OP reply, that is what I discussed with her. She had chosen to try to work it out rather than pursuing Polly. It is something she claims she isn't sure if and wants to explore. She decided that exploration was worth losing me. I understand that it could come up again, and we can address it then, in the meantime she wants to try to make us work. I just don't think she even knows what level of effort I need from her. I try to explain, but I think she's caught up on the idea that I'm pressuring for Zex when she doesn't feel on the mood and so pulls back further. Honestly, I don't think she's Polly, I think she felt the excitement that emotional sexual encounters can provide. Comment 3 Bro thinks she's having teenage kids but wanted Zex adventure. And cheating on you for 5 months. It's enough best to tell her you wanted divorce and your stepchildren understand mom is the real cause of divorce. She's been hidden for five months. In future definitely she's physically cheating on you. Get legal support. 
Don't waste your time. Don't believe her words. OP reply. I trust her actions. That is what I'm most observing. While I don't think she is giving near the effort she needs to, from what I've seen she's been honest and completely open since she admitted the emotional affair. I'm a bit emotionally exhausted right now. I think if you read more through the thread you could figure out what I was looking for. Maybe I just needed to be heard and supported, because the one who usually does that is the cause.